interviewed, I interviewed Heather Hunter, who used to be the first African-American porn star. And she gave her life to God after 10 years and quit. So they, amen. And I know some of y'all scared to clap because y'all know who Heather is. So we ain't gonna, we understand. <laughs> some of y'all probably sitting there going, oh. <laughs> but um, we talked about that and, and, and we had some other um, uh, guest stars on the, on the program, uh, Vanessa Williams from Soul Food. And um, uh, I forgot the boy's name, but he was, he's a comedian and an actor, a, a kind of a big actor. I forgot his name anyway. But we talked about it and um, we, it, was, it, was, it was powerful. Uh, it, it, in my audience, I had uh, the privilege of meeting um, uh, Tyrese's mother and Snoop Doggy Dog's mother came to the show. And so that, that God really blessed it, and they, they let me talk about Jesus, and I busted out and started singing, and people started crying. And so they had to pitch the show to the, here in New York, they had to pitch the show on last Monday, and I was supposed to make it there for that. So it was a double thing that I had missed because I was supposed to be downtown Manhattan where they have, um, uh, the an annual sponsorship dinner. And this is where all the sponsors, from Tide Washing Powder to insurance to, you know, everybody come and they watch the different formats of different networks and they bid to see who's going to pay for the commercial time behind it. And we got picked up and not only picked up, but possibly, <laughs> hey man, when I, when I signed my contract, I was supposed to sign it for, um, I did the pilot, and usually when they offer an opening season for a show, they let you um, shoot three shows, and then they play those three shows to see if anybody's gonna grab it. And they, sh they, they signed my contract for a whole season, which is 30 shows. Amen, God is good. He's doing everything he promised that he would do. He's not a liar. He is not a liar. So I was supposed to be there for them. And the blessing thing about it is I was supposed to be there for them to introduce me to the audience and then me talk about the show. And I didn't even make it. And the show got picked up. And not only picked up, but, but one of the major networks, very, very major, and I can't mention the name right now, but very major is getting ready to co-partner with BET to put the show in syndication. They were that impressed with my format because I told them I would sign the contract and I would do the show, but I will not take Jesus out. Amen, somebody. I will not cover up and call it a it or a higher power or a force. It would be Jesus and it would be the Holy Ghost and we will fall out and speak in tongues. If you don't want that, I can't sign this. Amen. Amen, that's all I know. All I know is this is how I got here. I got here. This is how I got here. People asked me the other day, why aren't you tired with, you know, you fly all the way to New York and you, you still doing the prayer. That's too much. I said, look, I'll cut something else before I cut this prayer. Because this is how I got here. You don't forget the bridge that brought you over. You get to where you're going on your knees and you stay on your knees. Amen, somebody. I told you the Lord is going to bless us. I said he's going to bless us. Our next level of testing and trials will not be because we don't have stuff. Our next level, y'all can go with me if you want to, but stay there. But my, our next level will be because the Lord will bless us so much that our trial would be who we are and who we remain with the blessing. Amen. Some of y'all patty caking God on that. I ain't patty kicking God because I know what he's getting ready to do. I know what he's already doing. Praise God. Even for the threshing floor revival. If you miss the threshing floor revival, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you, but Lord have mercy. You need to get the tapes from the threshing floor of our revival, you gotta call the ministry, whatever you gotta do, cause I'm telling you, God showed up and showed completely out. He showed out. And 
That is the talk all over the country. God showed out at the Threshing Floor Revival. And so I wanted to start today, I wanted to start today with um, teaching my lesson because <clears throat> I'm noticing that our next level in prayer, and I told you that this level of prayer was different from the last level of prayer because we're not struggling about whether or not we want to go with God. We know we want to go with God. We're not, we, we, we're not in confusion about that. And so now in this next level, we're looking for the destiny of God. We're looking for the next level in him. And we're looking for what he uh, is commanding us to operate in. And so when I knew that the Lord wanted us to operate in another level of the realm of the spirit, and not just in the realm of, of everyday uh, prayer, and um, there were some other levels that he was taking us to, I just wanted to make sure that we're not dancing in other spirit realms and that we understand the spirit of the Lord and how to get into the presence of the Lord and why it is important for us to operate in that presence. And so when you look at that, you, that's why you see a lot of people doing a lot of strange things and all that and all that and all that. And you don't, you don't charge it to the head because they just don't know. You know, you don't charge it to their heart because they don't know. You know, you see people doing all kind of crazy stuff and, and, and you just say, well, you know what? That is a person that... Um, they're sincere about wanting the presence of the Lord and they're sincere in their pursuit after the presence of the Lord they just have not been taught about that presence and so they're so desperate for it until you know whatever voice that they hear tell them that do this and this will make you closer that's the way they act you know and so that's why we shouldn't look at people and judge when we you know see them with their neck all tied up and they hear it all you know just doing crazy stuff they don't mean any harm they just they just after the pursuit of the presence of god and just don't understand uh all of what they have to do to get there and in their um in their pursuit after it they end up in error when they don't know foundation amen somebody you don't know the laws of god you know what i'm saying and you don't know what it is that god requires and what he doesn't require. And so if, if we're not careful, you know, we, and that's why I tell you all the time, you see people walking walk the streets with their prayer shawl. You're not supposed to walk the street with your prayer shawl. Your prayer shawl is supposed to be uh, uh, for, for closed in prayer times. You know, I've seen people got them all wrapped around them in restaurants and stuff. They, they just don't know, you know, they, they don't know that it is a sacred garment and it is supposed to be used in, 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 in private times of prayer. And this is considered a closet. This is a prayer closet in here, and I will show you uh, that to be the truth. Um, if you go with me to Matthew 6, and I'm not going to stay there because I know some of you all are familiar with the teaching from Matthew 6, and um, you'll end up having to go and get the tapes. Catherine, I need you to run and get my glasses because they, I can't see. I'm just, I ain't going to even stand up here and pretend today. You know, like... Telling you, boy, you, I, 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 told, I told Sister Melissa, I said, you wait till you get over 40. You wait till you hit 40. And she's like, one day, she's like, probably you can't. I said, wait till you get over 40. You see? And you start, you know, holding your paper like this, and you push, and put, and after a while, your arm can't go no further. <laughs> it be way out there, and I still can't read it. So that, when, when it get like that, when it goes beyond your arm, you need a pair of glasses. Amen, somebody. So my arm, my shoulder, I done stretched almost like a ballet dancer, still can't read it. So I had to go get glasses, and then after you turn 45, that's a whole other story. There's glasses everywhere. Where are my gla glasses? By the bed, glasses in the car. Yeah, I have about four pairs. <laughs> and panics when I can't find them, because I can't read nothing without them. Amen, somebody for 47. We want to thank God. <laughs> we want a blessing. <laughs> Woo. That ain't nothing to play with. We're starting out with Matthew, the sixth chapter. And the reason why I want to start here is because I want to show you a parallel that in the sixth chapter, it talks about um, how we uh, ought not to become hypocrites in our prayer and standing in the synagogue and, 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 and repeatedly um, saying things in repetition that um, has no impact into the spirit realm and has no impact for your life, but just to be seen of men. So then somebody would say, well, why are we, conf why are we now having um, prayer here like this if, you know, he requires that, you know, we should not stand in the synagogue? Because there is a difference between personal prayer 
And there is a, tip, a difference between personal prayer and corporate prayer. Amen, somebody. And so when you are called to a corporate assembly, there is some things massively on another scale that God desires to get done in the spirit realm, and you are a part of that. Come on, somebody. Can I teach that right now? You are a part of that. What do I mean by you being a part of it? Because uh, you will come to a place in your prayer walk with the Lord that you will become tremendously blessed, changed, revived. Uh, all of what you will see happen for your family when you uh, accept the call to corporate prayer. And that is the reason why many times, uh, you know, I have a threshing floor that is at home in my house. And when, when I get on that floor, you know, I just pray to God and, you know, and I, 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 I weep before him. And, and, and that's my floor. When I go to the threshing floor in Waycross and I get on that floor, there's many times I have gotten on that floor and, um, and I would go to, you know, start talking about, you know, my problems or, you know, Lord, work it out. And the Lord has stopped me. And said to me that this is not the threshing floor of your issues. But this is the place where I've called you to pray for the nations. And so I cannot get on that floor talking about all of my issues. Amen somebody. And so he calls you to a personal time in prayer where you talk about your issues and all of that. But when he calls you to massive prayer, he calls you to massive prayer for the assignment that he has on your life. That is the reason why this level of prayer would be different than the last level of prayer. Because the last level of prayer, we was trying to get it right. This level of prayer, he's calling you to an assignment. There are people he needs you to pray for. There are cities he needs you to pray for. There are countries he needs you to pray for. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. You thought this was about you. It's not about you. Oh, Lord. Some of y'all looking like you disappointed. I'm just going to come in here and just tell you. He's he not getting ready to create an atmosphere for sloppy agape. Because a lot of things that we pray about, Lord Jesus, this is so powerful. A lot of things that we pray about, uh, we already have the answer. He's already answered. Because when you come to this level of prayer, he said, even before you ask me, I have already answered you. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into that. One translation said, while you are asking. While you are asking. He's already doing it. So he's not talking about the people that do not know their God. This statement is not to the people that's got to get to know God every week. This statement is to the people that knows their God. And how do I know I know God? Because I walk in a confidence of his ability. I don't have to wait till I come here to Tuesday to try him. To see if he will do it. I came to obey him. Not try him. Woo. I came to answer a call because my faith level have gone to another place. What place is that? My faith level has gone to this place. That I have faith in God and I have the faith of God to the point that if God doesn't work out my situation my way, I trust him to the fact that he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I'm coming out as pure gold. I trust the fact that if he don't work it out, he got another plan. And the plan is better than the plan that I'm asking him for. Because he said my God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. Woo. Tell somebody if he don't do it my way, he got a better way. Oh, Y'all better say that like you mean it. You better say that if he ain't doing it my way, he got a better way. And that's why I can still shout when it, when it ain't paid. That's why I can still shout if they come and take it. Hallelujah. That's why I'm not going to let the devil cause me to become distracted from my assignment fooling with people and stuff. Oh, y'all sit down. Woo. Learn to trust him. Walk with God is to trust him. Trust him when you can't trace him. Trust him when you can't figure out why he did stuff. Why he didn't do stuff. Okay, God, you know what you're doing. My bad. You, know, you get through, uh, uh, uh. And see, the fact remains is that in our personal prayer, in our personal prayer, we're, 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 
we're, we're looking for the will of God. That, that, that we, we, that, that, to be honest, we're not really coming to do it our way. We're looking for the will of God. We're looking for the will of God. I ain't got nobody talk to me right there. You know nobody saying none. We're looking for the will of God. And so the reason why we're constantly disappointed in prayer because we never find the will for begging for our will. Bible said your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And half of the stuff you're asking me for, you're asking me uh, out of your level of purification. And so you're not far enough in me to know what is the perfect will. And that's why when you pray, if you hit my perfect will, I will perform it. If you don't, I do it my way. Because all of what's being done is my perfect will, not my permissive will. It's not what I allow. But God, I told you I wanted to, and I've been asking you, and I've been just begging you, and I've just been consecrating, and I've just been being, and it didn't work out that way. It wasn't perfect. Okay. You didn't, you didn't hear that. My, he's perfecting those things which concerns you. It wasn't perfect. It was a good idea, but it wasn't a God idea. He wants it perfect. Okay, y'all don't hear me. Because other things are attached to what you're praying about. So it ain't about you. It has to be connected to something. That's connected to something. That's connected to something. And if there's no connection, he cannot perform it. Okay, y'all ain't saying that. I done missed too many weeks because y'all done went back to somewhere else. Where, where, where y'all at? <laughs> where y'all at? Come on, you, you, got, you, got, you, got, you got to just suck it up and come on. You say, well, okay, he didn't do that. He didn't do that one the way I want him to do it, but that's okay, Lord. I trust you. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Job, because when I went to the hospital and Tisha took her, I got my little button on the day. Y'all pray for me. I mean, it was hard for me to walk back in prayer, but you know, I went to that hospital. I was like, why, God? Why? You know what I'm saying? I hollered like everybody else. You can hear me all over that hospital hollering, but I had to suck it up and said, okay, let me just go and shout because I know this is his will. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. And so many times we're in God's way with our own emotions. But we got to get out of God's way and say, God, however you work it out, I want you to work it out your way because I want your perfect will. Now let me get on to my assignment. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I mean, y'all know I'm telling the truth. You find the will of God, the will of God is painful. So I'm getting ready to talk to a whole nother group here. I'm getting ready to talk to a whole nother group because y'all I just want to see the glory of the Lord. And I just want to see God do it. And honey, I just want to shout. But see, what I'm learning is, I'm learning is, there is another glory to God besides his brightness and his illumination. Okay, we're going we're gonna to study that. Come on. Let's go into this. Somebody said that's deep right there. There's another level to God besides his brightness and his illumination. The glycerine. You know, all that. Ooh, hey. There's another level to God. And that level is really to the immature people who really don't know God. Who need to be fascinated by him to follow him. Can I teach this today? That's what the mass majority of the body of Christ is. We have to be fascinated by God for God to, for us to serve him. Oh, I thank God that he did so much for me. Ooh, honey, you just don't know. Ooh. All right. We need to have that same thanks when he don't do nothing for you. This is going to be harder than I think, Dr. Morgan. I, I thought it was going to be easy to just come back after being gone for four weeks, but this is harder than I thought. Sister Tanya, they're trying to kill me today. <laughs> he says here, and I want you to hear this, I want you to hear this, I want you to hear this, I want you to hear this. So this prayer right here, and I want you to see how, though it is personal prayer, and there is corporate prayer, they still follow a pattern and a format, and once you find the pattern of God, you're not confused in direction. Because that's what it is. We, we, you know, we often think that God is just wandering somewhere. The Spirit of the Lord just wanders and, and is so mystical and you just got to search and find him. It's a pattern in here. And once you find the pattern, you're no longer lost. 
Because you know how the order of certain things happen. For example, prayer in the corporate sense of the word and prayer in the personal sense of the word starts out by giving reverence and glory and honor to God. And he said, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means thy name kept holy. Thy name kept with integrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I trust his name. I believe in the power of his name and the ability of his name and all of his names. Yahweh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Shalom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So then the responsibility of the intercessor is to keep that name reverence and to keep that name believable. Well, I just said something right there. So you, you know, you lost first of all in prayer. You took up and said, and Lord, I just, I just don't know if you would, but I just, you know, just help my faith. You missed the whole point. You missed the whole point because the Bible said he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. Y'all ain't saying that. So I'm not coming to him saying, God, I just hope you can do this. Oh, God, I just want you just to protect me. No, you come in here thanking him for his ability, not asking him for his ability. God, I thank you for my I thank you because you are Jehovah Rapha. You are my healer. Come on, somebody. You come in magnifying the name of the Lord. You put too much attention on what the devil do. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you something in that. So when you look over at us getting to Matthew in that, it is because there is a foundation in it from the Old Testament. The New Testament tries to give us the manifestation of the establishment of the workings, the, the, the first workings of the Old Testament. So when you see the Old Testament, it is a storyboard. It is God saying to us, first of all, I'm God and I'm mighty. How do I introduce myself to a people that don't know me? Because, you know, they, 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 I just can't show them me like that. But because I'm their creator, they got to serve me. But everybody that come close to me can't just drop dead. So I have a designed a way for them to come into my presence. So the Lord developed something, and I'm not going to stand this, but it is important that I go back to this. He developed uh, 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 this, 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 this box. And so he told them in the book of uh, Chronicles when they got ready to do um, the, uh, the, the, the tabernacle. And they started out, I want you to see something, but I want you to go there with me because it's important because we're going, to, we're going to live there for a couple of weeks um, in the book of Second Chronicles, if you would go there with me. And he said, um, I believe I'm going to, uh, ta-da, 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 ta-da. Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter. And the reason why we're going there is because I want you to understand the end result of the establishing of bringing up the ark. This paper is not important, isn't it? but you can give it to me back. Um, when he asked them and gave them instructions about this, about the ark of the covenant, and I know we follow it and we see it and. You know, many of you have seen it here and you've seen me with it. And I don't want to try to justify why, you know, why you've seen it because, you know, that, that's neither here nor there because I know that it's scriptural. And what it represents, uh, the Bible says that I wanted you all, he said, I wanted uh, David, I wanted uh, Solomon now because of David's transgressions and him, he becoming a man of war. Um, I want you to... Uh, do this box according to my measurements. And so people have always said, but what's been so important about that? Because remember, I'm, I'm trying to establish with you your relationship with God. I'm trying to help you understand what, why do you have authority in God? So he said, to design this box, fix it a certain way. And so he told them, he said, when you fix it a certain way, I want, and he kept saying this, I want you to put in it the tablets of the testimony of the Ten Commandments, of a testimony. And so he said, after you put this in there and you place it in the tabernacle, uh, fire came from heaven, and so the glory of God, you know, hit the box and hit the altar, and it was all illuminated, and everybody was happy. Okay? So they really thought at this point, okay, this, why have God done this? Because he said, this box will symbolize, it will be the symbol of my presence. Now, that, now, that's powerful right there. 
Because really it don't make any sense. How can a box be the symbol of God's presence? And then he told them to put a lid on it and put the cherubim on top of the lid and facing each other. And how, how uh, this is the mercy seat. Now, how is it that this box containing the testimony of the tablets, now why is it that the Lord says that it would be a symbol of my presence? Why does he say it would be a symbol of my presence? But this is what he kept saying before Moses had the mountaintop experience. Build this and you will put in it the tablets of testimony that I will give you. He kept saying that to him, that I will give you, that I will give you, that I will give you, that I will give you. When the time came and he got it, watch this, watch this. I'm going to let you know right now why you are powerful in prayer and why the enemy hates you. Okay? Especially when you, when you walk with this knowledge. Because the testimony and the Ten Commandments and how the Lord showed it to me was that the testimony and the Ten Commandments were the do nots of the Lord. It was, it was the thing that God would use to bring them out, to take them in, and to sustain them. Okay, the mama said, that's the reason why the enemy tried to make you play with your salvation. And say, well, that's all right. I slipped and I got, I, I got overwhelmed, but I did it this time. And, and you know what? Well, God just understand because I'm human. And the reason why the devil let you take your salvation that careless is because if you lose the do not in your heart, in your arc of your heart, and you lose your testimony, then the presence of the Lord is not guaranteed to be with you. The reason why the presence of God is with you and it's not based on your emotions, it's not based on whether or not you feel that he's there if you keep your testimony he cannot leave you okay I'm not gonna get no amen right there I'm not gonna get a lot of amens right there I'm not gonna get a lot of amen that testimony in that box that testimony in that box is what kept them going you, you don't hear me it was, it was what they maintained that when the Lord said don't touch this I don't care what my girlfriend does I have a do not in my heart. I don't care what my cousin do. There's some stuff that God has told me never to touch again. There's some things that God brought me out of that I cannot go back to. And that is why the Lord is with me. Y'all. Wait, 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 but that's the ark of the church. No, the Bible says now, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Which means in every last one of us, we have our own ark and we all have our own testimony. Oh, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down, because y'all, y'all, y'all look. That's why you can't do it no more. It ain't about your church. It ain't about if I do this and the people catch me doing it at the bar and they'll talk about it. It ain't even got nothing to do with you. Come on, somebody. It ain't got nothing to do with your denomination. It's got something to do with what the Lord has brought you from. Because the thing that he brought you from is the thing that you must maintain. So the testimony is from your past. It sustains your present. And that's what takes you to your future. That's why it works in your kitchen. That's why it works in your bedroom. I'm not here, y'all. That's why you can have church anywhere. You can have church in your basement. You can pull your car over and set up tabernacle right in your car. Because I got a testimony. Woo. I'm going to leave that alone because we ain't going to get out of here if I leave. I got a testimony. Come on here, somebody. I don't feel good today, but he can't leave me. I don't know which way to go, but he can't leave me. I don't have all the answers, but he cannot leave me because I still have a testimony. Y'all sit down because I didn't mean to preach that hard. That too, that soon. Thank you, Jesus. You got to keep your thou shall not. You got to keep your thou shall not. I don't care who doing it. You got to keep, you got to keep yours. Because there's some place that God has taken you. There's a promised land you got to get to. There's some things he promised you. Woo, I just felt that. Touch somebody and say, there's some stuff he promised me. Tell me I'm on my way to a promised land. 
Because I have it. That's why, that's why David couldn't build the tabernacle. Because he lost it. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. I wish I had somebody shout right there. I'm going to say it again. That's why David couldn't build the tabernacle. Because he lost it. He didn't know the value of what he had. He forgot who he was when God found him tending sheep. And he was a worshiper. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Oh my God, y'all like, like y'all can't hear this. Y'all like y'all, y'all can't hear this. See, that's the reason why some people can't get it together. That's the reason why they up today and down tomorrow. In church today and out of church the next day. You know what's wrong with them? They can't build a tabernacle. They can't build a temple. You don't hear me. They can't walk right. They can't talk right. They can't keep their life right. They can't establish their integrity in God. Because they have no testimony. Because they keep moving away from the thou shalt not. And when you do that, you can't build a temple. Okay, sit down. Sit down, because y'all looking at me like, they like, what? You don't have a house. You're not a temple. You can't get yours built. Oh, Lord Jesus. You don't have no outer court. You can't praise God. That's why the praise team got to pump you for 30 minutes. You don't have an outer court. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't have a manure. You don't have a fire in your spirit. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't have show bread. You don't have the daily bread. You can't maintain it. You don't have the robe of righteousness. Your curtain around your tent does not say, say you're righteous. That's why you can't build it. But prophets, why I keep messing up? Why I keep falling about no ark? Shh, sit down. No ark, no ark. You don't have one. Because <laughs> you go to church. You just read your Bible. It hasn't become a thou shalt not to you. Y'all ain't saying that. You got a lot of people going to church and they can't build God a temple. The word said, We are now the temple. You ain't saying that. Why did, why did he confirm us to be the temple? Because when Jesus Christ came, well, well, Jesus saved me. Well, what does all that mean? He, sa he saved me. Well, he, was, he was the statue of the thou shalt not. It was his presence and his life and what he represented that said, you don't do this no more. So when you said Jesus live in my heart, <laughs> what you're really saying is, I got to, you don't do that no more in you. The things I used to do, I don't, not just don't, I can't do no more and maintain the glory. The places I used to go, I cannot go anymore and maintain the glory. I can come in church and shout, but that is as far as it go because I'm in another tabernacle. But I need my own, I need my own tabernacle when I have to go to the hospital, when I have to face the lawyer, when I have to face tribulation. I can't come to church, mother. Oh, God, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Well, you come in next week and the church done burnt down. I just get my praise on when I'm in that second seat. Let me hurry up and get there because I hope ain't nobody in my chair. What, what, what happened if the church burnt? What happened if they get rid of all the seats? Woo! It's all right. I don't care where I sit. Put me in the back. Hey, put me in the basement. I can be in the overflow room. Because I got a thou shalt not. He'll meet me over there. As a matter of fact, you really want to see somebody have church? Let somebody have a thou shalt not. And it look like they're being denied the presence. They'll break out and shout right there in the kitchen. They'll break out and shout in the lobby. They'll have church all by themselves. People that have a thou shalt not don't need other people. need no intercessory prayer partner when I have a thou shalt not all I need to do is start worshiping him all I need to do is remind myself of where he brought me from all I gotta do is pull up my testimony and realize that he had mercy on me all I need to do is approach the mercy seat hey y'all sit down I'm preaching to him hey if it had not 
been for the Lord? Where would I be? It was his mercy and his grace. That's the reason why folk got to be careful when they start trying to talk about your testimony and trying to dig up your past. Because the Bible said there were about 70 men that lifted the mercy seat and looked in on the tabernacle of the testimony and they dropped dead. Because it's a dangerous thing to bring up my past. My past ain't none of your business. Where he brought me from ain't none of your business. God will kill you for that. Who am I talking to? That's why when folk talk about you, you ought to praise God. Because they're just confirming that the Lord is with you. properties they hurt my feeling because I know I used to be a prostitute or I know I used to be on drugs and, and that really hurt me baby they brought it up then that's when you ought to start praising God because all they doing is confirming that he'll never leave me nor forsake me he can't y'all sit down because I'm I got to finish this lesson I don't want to get ahead of myself I'm already done going out too far Woo. Jesus, Jesus, that's the reason why Moses said, Moses said, when the ark comes to a rest in the place of the tent of meeting for that time, the glory of the Lord shines round about it, but when they pick it up to travel, the Bible said that Moses said, it turns into a mighty warrior. You don't hear me. <laughs> he started telling the ark, go before us and fight our battles. Make the crooked places straight. Lead us and guide us. Give us divine direction. Who am I talking about? See, that's the reason why the power of really who you are don't work till you get out of here. What you really got is not made manifest till you leave the sanctuary. Who am I talking to? Because it's that time that it fights your enemies. It's that time that it becomes a mighty battle axe. It's that time that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. Okay, you don't know the power of what you have. You don't know the power of what you have. So sit down. Let me just tell you. Let me 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 tell you what you got. <laughs> Ooh, when I found this out, I said, good Lord have mercy. When I found this out, I said, Lord have mercy. See, see, people don't know the power of what they have, so they don't understand the respect of it. The Bible said when, when, uh, when Israel got into a war and they went to battle and they came back and they told Eli, your son is dead. The Bible said no response. Your other son died too. The Bible said no response. But when they said, and they stole the Ark of the Covenant, he fell backwards and broke his neck because he understood what it's like not to have an Ark. You don't hear what I'm saying. In other words, my sons can die, but I cannot be without the Ark of the Lord because that is my safety. That is my protection. That is my covering. He said, we ain't got no, we ain't got no Ark. It's a strange thing when people do stuff. Because they do stuff and, and, they, and, they, and, and they steal stuff and don't even know what they done stole. I don't know if you ever spend, you ever say people shout like you and just want to take your stuff and act like you? <laughs> you, 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 you something wrong with you. Okay, I'm, I'm helping somebody. I'm helping somebody. I'm helping somebody right there. I'm helping somebody. People try to take what you got, try to beat you down with a whole lot of stuff and make you feel less than trying to crush the ark. Okay, let me show you what happened to people like that. Let me show you what happened to people like that. Because see, you carry a mighty thing and it works by itself. Let me help you with something. You don't, you don't need to help it. All you need to do is keep the testimony. You, oh, see, you see, I'm trying to help you right now. That's why, that's why intercessors that are called to this level in prayer, you don't work that hard in prayer. You do damage in prayer. You ain't got to be there. Oh, God, I'm in spiritual warfare. You ain't in spiritual warfare. Not for your life. So you roll with it when you come to this level. You just kind of roll with it. 
He's going, oh, okay. It's one of them days. All right. Let me just roll with this. You don't be, I don't understand. Because the Bible said that when Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane, it says when the enemy had, this is what the, what the Amplified Bible said, and when the enemy had ended his circle, his circle of warfare, Jesus returned in prayer. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a cycle. You don't hear me, I See, he fights, he fights the people that carry the ark more than anybody because he has to constantly allow other things to happen in your life to you because he after your testimony. And see, that's why he'll make people make you real mad, especially if you're a person that used to cuss. He'll let somebody make you real so you can say, I, I'm not the... God. Ooh. That's why you make your kids shut. So you, you say, if you don't say, I'm going to beat your ass. Ooh, good. Because he want it. He want it. He want it. He want the testimony. He wants you to reach in the ark and take it out. Come on here, somebody. He wants you to get rid of it. Am I helping anybody today? Am I helping anybody today? That's why you got to guard it. You got to protect it. Come on, somebody. You see stuff like that, you got, okay, I know what the devil is after right there. Because if, cause, cause if he get that ark, if he get the testimony, if he send me back to doing what my heart have brought me from, what the, thou shalt not do, then I got an empty box. And all I do is shout in church, and he ain't scared of me. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't scared of me because I dance and shout and speak in tongues. He only scared of you when you carry the testimony. When you're carrying the doubt, shall not in your heart. Come on here, somebody. Come on. And see, and see, and see what happens is, what happens is it got into the hands of the wrong people. And why am I, why am I going through this to show you this? Because, because they, 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 they took the ark after they stole it and said, you know, we're going to take it and we're going to put it, you know, in, 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 this is so powerful right here. This is so powerful. God blessed me. He blessed my life when he showed me this. He said, and sometimes you have to understand that we too busy trying to, trying to win the battle. And God is trying to give us the, the victory of the war. And so, and so there will be times in our walk with God when we have to appear to have lost. Okay, you don't hear me. Because y'all don't like that side. I got the victory, I got the victory, I got the victory. Until it looked like you ain't got the victory. And then you feel like God let you down. But see, there, there, there's a stage that you must go through so that what you have can be proven. The first place that they stole it and took it to was Dagon's temple. And they set it up in front of Dagon's temple and came back the next day. And, and, and the idol temple, uh, uh, the idol God had been knocked over. And so they said, but maybe this is a mistake. And we're going to go back in and we're going to set Dagon back up. They set him back up and they came back the next time. The palms of his hand and his head was off. Because what God was trying to, I'm just, listen, listen. What he's trying to let you see is that when it looks like the enemy has won, it is the presence of the Lord going in to fight against a stronghold that you don't have the physical capacity or the mental capacity to fight that battle. Who am I talking to right there? So what he's trying to show you is what you carry in your heart is more powerful than you think. And it do not need you. It needs you to keep your testimony. Now that right there was powerful. I don't know. Okay, can I repeat that? Because some of y'all looking like, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, it's a loss. It's a, it's, a, it's a loss battle. So that the art can perform. So that the art can be made manifest in your life. So that it can go before you. You don't hear what I'm saying. It has to be proven that it is powerful. You don't make it powerful. The testimony make it powerful. And long as you keep the testimony, that's why you can stay in California and God can work something out for you in Texas. Because he don't need you there. He needs your testimony. Y'all look at me. Sit down. Just sit down. Just, just sit down. Sit down, I'm about to get mad at y'all. Sit down. <laughs> okay, I'm, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just bring a little bit of clarity to that? Israel wasn't there talking about, yeah, go on, I'll do it. We got it. Oh, they lost it. 
They weren't even there when Dagon fell. Because what God was trying to show, this thing still works. Because the testimony is in it. They don't like me at the church and they, everybody against me. They like, That's all right. It still works. You liking me don't make it not work. And, uh, you don't want to promise I got so much welfare and they don't want my ministry. They can't stop your ministry from coming on. Okay, y'all ain't saying that. They don't never let me lead a song in the choir. That's all right. You going to sing? Oh, I'm going to You fretting over the wrong stuff. Well, they won't let me sing here. You may be in the wrong temple. I'm not here nobody talk to me. I'm not here nobody talk to me. Because if you got an ark in your heart, you got to have a wilderness experience. I'm not hearing y'all preach back to me right there. Now, y'all don't want to hear that. You got to walk through the wilderness. Children of Israel went through the wilderness. You too. And how you going to come out is your obedience too. Either you're going to be Aaron or you're going to be Joshua and Caleb. Make up in your mind, but you're going to go through the wilderness. All right. All right. All right, sit down. Let me, let me, just, let me just help you. I, anybody get anything out of this? Tell your neighbor, don't let him take it now. Don't let him take it. It is a guaranteed presence. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. He took it to Dagon, the ark, knocked him down off his throne, a stronghold, subdued it. He left there, they took it to Ashdod, and Ashdod saw it coming and said, this can't stay, are we sorry? Because I don't know what's going on with this thing. We, we, uh, no, it ain't staying here. And the Bible said they cried out against it and said no. Turned around, they took it to Goth, and they was like, well, we, 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 we want it, all right. And then the boils and, 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 and mice and everything else broke out. That thing that's in you is a killer. It's a tormentor. You, 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 you ain't got to fight your enemies. You ain't got to say nothing. Just keep what he told you not to do. And you will hear about it in a minute. You know so and so, so and so, so and so, then lost her job and lost her house and love and you be like, mm. really? Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. I really wish I had an amen right there. A lot of us don't have that experience because we too busy fighting our own battle and you don't have to. That's why he keeps saying this battle is not yours. This one is the Lord's. <laughs> you, don't, you, you need not fight in this one. Oh, I don't hear nobody talk to me. You need not fight in this one. And so when it traveled and nobody wanted it and then everything was cutting up and then after a while David said, okay, he heard a rumor that um, Obed-Edom's house was blessed for three months because they said, take that thing down there and you know, do something. But he, 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 David, David, David said, we're going to get the ark. First he said, we're going to get it. And then, they, do y'all want it? Everybody was like, okay, we're going to get it. They went up to get the ark in their flesh. Went up and get the ark. Got over there and got it. Wasn't, wasn't prepared to carry it. Thought it was just church. Thought it was just church. The cart stumbled. The oxen stumbled. It went to fall over. Uzzah reached to help it, and he died. First symbol, it don't need your help. It needs your heart. David got mad and said, well, we're we going to take it over here then because uh, then we don't know how to bring it up. Then what you want us to do? And he got in prayer. He got in prayer because he didn't have the heart to bring it up. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Because if your heart is not right, you can't be an intercessor. 
You can't pray for nobody if your heart ain't right. You don't hear me. That's why the Lord allowed a lot of things to surface in your life to show you all the stuff that's in you. That's why the first one, that's why personal prayer is important before you answer the call to corporate prayer. Because corporate prayer is an assignment. And if you don't have a personal prayer life, you can't operate in this realm. You come here every week and get blessed, but you're not doing any damage to the kingdom. As a matter of fact, you pick it a fight with the devil. The devil says, Jesus, we know. We don't know you. I know you ain't hard no shot because we don't even know you. We only see you on Tuesdays. Oh, come on, somebody. We ain't scared of you because we can whip you on Wednesday because you ain't going back to prayer until next Tuesday. Come on, somebody. And don't let prophets not show up. You ain't going then. Because your ark is her. Oh, come on. I just spoke something right there. See your ark. Don't let her miss two more flights. Don't let her decide not to come. I got you and your family. I know some of y'all can't say amen, just say ouch. Because I know where I was going, you didn't come. Is the prophet going to be there? Is the prophet going to be there? And some of y'all done timed that thing. When Elder said she missed the plane last week, then that means for sure she's going to be here today. You come all up in here missing an action. Ha, sha, na, na, masaya. Woo! You ain't got nothing but a broke down temple. I turned the corner, walked in the door, and I said, when is people going to get it together? When they going to get it together? No ark. You done did like the Bible said, you done, you done, you done built your temple and, and built your place and whitewashed it. So it to look like it's holy. But ain't nothing in it. Because ain't no sacrifice in it. Let me tell you the power of this thing. This thing is powerful. It's powerful. It is a provoker. When they decided that they were going to get the ark and David wouldn't ask the people, do y'all want it? And they say, yes, we're going up to get it. When Solomon built that temple, I want to show you something that's so powerful about this thing. When he built the temple, mother, there were 28,000 divisions in Israel. 28,000. When I said 28,000 divisions, I'm talking about 28,000 chief priests and elders who were all over departments and everything. The department, uh, uh, it was the Department of Treasure and the Department of, of the uh, Gifts and Treasures that was brought for the temple. Then there was the department that, 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 that a tribe was over all the gifts and, 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 and treasures that they dedicated to the temple. And then they had somebody that was over that to watch and count and keep an account for the treasure that was over the temple. And then they had a treasury department and then they had a, a finance group that was, that, that was among the tribe. Then they had another finance group that was that was outside and handled the outside affairs of, of the whole tribes. Y'all ain't saying that. So in just one department, Madge, in the area of finances, they had about 10 or, or almost a thousand divisions. So then we got down to tambourines and horns. They had a horn section and then, and then another kind of horn and then a manager of the horns and then, and then the cleaners of the horns and the people that got at the storage of the horn. And when they got through, it was 28,000 different departments. And you, we can't even make it with the ushers and the nurses. We ain't got but four people on the nurses board and, and 12 people to usher and, and six people to run the candle. And we argue about that. We can't hardly.
running around the church without everybody in the corner whispering. And she said that. And she hurt my feelings. And don't let her talk to you like that. And who you think he is? Oh, he, he need to just get, get on his job. And, and that's all right. Because God going God to bring it up. I'm going to tell you something. 28,000. This wasn't the people. This was the leadership. I'm, I'm, can, I, can, I, can I talk about this? Can I talk about That's why you were called in here. That's why you were called to this level. That's why I'm back here at prayer. I'm not back here for the spoon feeding people that don't know whether or not they're going to, where, where they're going. And God, I'm here for the elders. I'm here for the people that's been grown up. That's who I came back for. I didn't came back to come back and go, oh, then take that pastor out your mouth. And what I tell you, you doing that again? You still doing that? You still falling in that area? You still, no, 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 no. 28,000 divisions, mother. But the Bible said when they got ready to bring up the Ark of the Covenant, watch this. He said they forgot their divisions and the priests began to pick up tamarines and all of that. I'm going to tell you something. This thing is so powerful that when the Ark start coming up, they forgot about their positions and the priest turned into worshipers you don't hear what I'm saying this thing will break you down to nothing when you really got the ark of God in your heart it'll make you forget about you an usher it'll make you forget about you the pastor it'll make you forget about you the head elder it'll make you cry like a spank baby it'll make you run around the church it'll make you dance when you done told people I don't shout like that that's how I know we don't have the ark We don't have it. I'm not, see, yo, yo. I can't get no amens right there, Elder Morgan, because we don't have it. Well, I, 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 I don't do that. Y'all praise him. Let the saint know it was the elders, it was the leaders that start dancing and shouting. It was the leaders that threw themselves down on the ground. David danced out of his clothes. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. When you really got the ark, it'll make you forget about who you are. Because when the presence of the Lord shows up, something happens to the atmosphere. Something happens in your heart. You forget about your makeup. You forget about your hairstyle. You ain't thinking about no clothes. I gotta praise him. The ark compels me to praise him. My testimony compels me to praise him. I'm not thinking about who they say I am. Y'all sit down because we ain't got it yet. Glory to God. Glory to God. We get the knowledge of this thing right. We won't have no musicians. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We get the knowledge of this thing right. We ain't got no praise team. Oh, you don't hear me? The praise team ain't the leader. I'm not here, but you think the ark is the leader. Whoa, I wish I had somebody right there to go to praising God. That's what provoke you to praise. That's what provoke you to praise and not stop. Sit down because you don't understand the presence. I want you to get this. My God. My God. This thing is powerful. They start bringing up the ark and people just start giving everything they had. David said, I had some, I had some cash. David said, I had a storage that I was saving and it was private. He said, but when I saw the ark of the Lord coming, I gave it all. He said, I went into my private stash and got it. The offering was 12 miles long. See, y'all play too much. But well, I ain't going to get my, all I got is my little $20 prayer. See, you don't have no ark. Because when they saw the ark of the covenant, and they understood the importance of what they had, they gave and couldn't stop giving. Mother, they had to make them stop giving. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me right there. The Bible said that they started giving an offering that they could not even count. I don't hear y'all talking back to me because it'll make you pour out of yourself. It'll make you do stuff you said you would never do. Who am I preaching to right there? It'll make you pour out of yourself. It'll make you give up everything you got. That's the 
reason why I know we ain't got it because it'll make you stop doing wrong oh you don't hear me it'll make it look like this ain't nothing to give up smoking it ain't nothing to give up drinking it ain't nothing to give up shacking and fornicating I got something in my heart and I'll do anything for the glory I'll do anything for the glory. Y'all ain't saying whatever it costs, I'll pay it. I'm the little boy shy. That's why it's not a hard thing. Some of y'all can't even come to pray across town. But it ain't a hard thing for me to drive 45 minutes to the airport and get in the airport and go through security and fly here and sleep upstairs in the office because I will do anything for the ark. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you recognize what's in you, no price is too great to pay. Oh, sit down. Sit down. Sit down, because you got it twisted. You thought I was doing this for y'all? You got it twisted. You thought I was coming here so y'all wouldn't be disappointed? You got it twisted. I was coming when it wasn't but three people. I was coming when it wasn't nobody but me and Tisha. Oh, you think this is about y'all? It ain't about you. It's about the art, baby. It's about what I got in here. It's about what I'm compelled to do. You thought I was coming here because you? No, I'm coming because of the ark. I'll pay any price for the ark. I'll do it for the ark. I'll worship for the ark. I'll get on the plane for the ark. I'll sit in airports for the ark. I'll stay up all night longer I'll sleep on a couch for the ark that's why that's why it's still work Tanya if they don't show up if you don't come I still got it if you don't show up I still got it if all the roads was empty I still got it the power doesn't decrease because you don't come are you hearing what I'm the power increases because the greater the sacrifice the greater the glory the more you have to pay the more glory you get the more you have to give up the more God gives back to you y'all sit down because I'm going to try to get out of here let me get out of here. Lord have mercy. I'm going to have to lay in this one for a few days. I'm going to have to lay in this for a few weeks. Hold up, I'll Well, you don't know what I'm going through. Shut up and go through. Because the glory of God is trying to be revealed. Hey, Shandaranayasaya. Hallelujah. The greater the sacrifice. The greater the glory. I do what I do because the ark is in my heart. I do what I do because the ark I can't stay home. I can't stay in the bed. Let me read this. Let me read this. Let me read this. Oh, God of Jesus. Hmm. It said here. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. He deserves the glory. He deserves the praise. Give it to him. Cry out of your spirit. Ignite the ark of the covenant. Release the power that's within you. Give him glory. Give him glory. The more you praise him, the more he becomes magnified. Lift him up. Lift him up. Hey, 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 oh, hallelujah, glory to your high name. Let me show you what we're doing. 
Give me 30 seconds. I want you to take your seat. I want to show you what we're doing. Let me show you what just, let me show you what's trying to happen in here. I feel sorry for anybody that didn't come today. Let me show you what's trying to happen in here because the Bible said that when they brought up the Ark of the Covenant and it says, and it said this, and the priests forgot about their divisions and they forgot about all of their different departments and they began to blow trumpets. It said, when they began to make one sound in unison and they lifted their voices and began to shout, y'all ain't hearing me. See, I'm coming after all of y'all, but I don't shout like that and I don't scream like that and I don't have to open my mouth and I don't have to put that much energy in it. The Lord knows my heart. Wait a minute, but, but listen, listen. If you like that and that's your mentality, then you after the church and you want a good time and you want to say I had a moment but the Bible said that when they shouted in unison it said and when they started shouting and they forgot about their position it said when they turned around the glory cloud fell I'm not at the church I'm ready for the cloud I don't want church I'm ready for the cloud I'm ready for the power of God to hit this place where we will not be able to stand up I gotta have the cloud. I want the cloud. I gotta have it. I don't want to shout. I don't want to just dance. I want to see the glory of God drop in here. Where it knocks us to our knees. Where it makes you lay down. Where you cannot stand up. shouted when they got out of character when they got out of their benches can I paraphrase this when they forgot about where they were sitting and they got out of their rows and they began to shout in unison it said they couldn't stand up in the temple because the glory cloud had filled the house what did that mean when the glory cloud fall it hides your enemies when the glory cloud fall it puts you in a secret place when the glory cloud found the enemy can't locate you when the glory cloud Ball, huh? God makes a way out of no way. Huh? Who am I talking to? Is there anybody huh, that want to see the cloud? Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me say this. Because that's the level we're going to. That's the level we're going to. The level we're going to is a level that where we praise him in this prayer until we can't talk. We praise him till we can't stand up. You don't hear what I'm saying. So if you got to wake yourself up an hour earlier and drink 10 cups of coffee, we after the cloud. I don't want to just come to 5 a.m. prayer. I done already had that. I done already been there. That part is over with. That's the old mantle. That's the old reign. But the Bible said that the latter reign shall be greater than the former reign. Is there anybody that want it? Then open up your mouth and begin to give God a shout. Give him a shout. Hey. Hey. I'm shouting for my next level. I'm shouting for my next level. I'm shouting for my next victory. I'm shouting for the glory cloud. I'm shouting for a fresh anointing. I'm shouting for a fresh wind. Shout! Come on, you gotta press in today. You gotta press in today. You gotta press in today. You gotta press in. If you ain't never shouted before, shout today. If you ain't never shouted before, shout now. Shout now. Hey. I'm 
waking up something. I'm waking up something in your spirit. I'm reviving something. I'm restoring something. I'm renewing your mind. I'm renewing your mind. I'm restoring your joy. I'm giving you back your place. I'm giving you back your place.
going for the city. to be close to you just to be close to you it's my desire just to be close to you just to be close to you just to be Lord, 
reason why the glory cloud fell because it no longer became about them the focus became the ark the focus became the manifestation of the glory that's what they were after the focus became God get the glory out of my life God get the glory out of my ark Lord said to me a couple of months ago, we were preparing for the threshing floor. He said, if you don't keep it in your heart, you can't carry it on your shoulder. You can't carry it to a nation that you don't have. Because let me tell you what he kept saying, and I want to leave this with you because we're going to pick this up because I'm not even almost finished with this. He kept telling Solomon, he kept telling David, that the house that you're going to build is going to be for my namesake and for my presence. The church was never built for us. We just put a thousand seats in here. It wasn't about us. When the tabernacle was built, it wasn't for how many people can sit in it. I ain't hear nobody talk to me right there. They didn't build it for the organ and, 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 and all that. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't build it for the piano. They built it so that the presence of the Lord can have a manifestation place. You don't hear me. It was built for his namesake and for his presence. Okay, I'm gonna hear you. So any church, any prayer group, where the manifestation of the presence of God is not there, you are in an illegal temple. Because it ain't about your choir. It ain't about your church. It ain't even about your message. It's about lifting up the name of Jesus and his presence. You don't hear me. We talk too much in the house of God about the devil. I'm 
not hearing y'all talk back to me. And moments when the manifestation of the glory of God should be in the house, we break that for the next choir song. We break it so they can make the announcements. When the purpose of it in the first place was for that moment. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. The menorah set to one side, the table of showbread set to the other. The altar of incense set in the middle, but the Ark of the Covenant was the center of attraction. And that it represents the presence of the Lord and his name. And we will shut down worship service so we can get to our message. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right now. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right now. We want you to pray for about six minutes. No, we pray to the cloud fall. You don't hear me. Jesus. Jesus. The next move of God. The next move of God. And I've been prophesying this. I've been saying this. The next move of God will be the hostile takeover of the presence of the Lord. You will not be able to contain it. You will not be able to contain it. The next move of God is because the people of God is looking for his presence. We got the word. We want his presence. Because it's in that presence that lives are changed. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. Tell them you can take everything I got. But whatever you do, don't take your spirit away from me. Don't take that. Don't take your presence away from me. Don't take it. Because I can go through anything as long as I know you're with me. I can deal with any situation as long as I know that he's with me. The presence. And that's why he's ordained this place. That's why he's called this prayer. Because for some of us, we need more than a 10 minute worship service. For some of us, we don't want to shout. We just want to bask in his presence. So easy to love. So easy to love. So easy to love. Lord, you're wonderful. So easy to love. That's what it was about the tabernacle. It was the presence. Sister Cummings and all the overlays in gold and all of what they had they was waiting for that cloud because without the cloud it was just the church and you know what Solomon said when the cloud came he said now Lord you have performed with your hands what you said you would do with your mouth Y'all don't hear me. He didn't say that while they was bringing the offerings. He didn't say it to after the cloud fell. And it was after the cloud that he gathered together and built an altar. And put that altar in the midst of the people. And stood and began to pray. And for a whole chapter he prayed. And when he got through praying, the Bible said, and then the fire fell. Okay, y'all So we, we want the consuming fire. We want the fire of God. But the cloud comes first. I'm not going to go into that because that's too I can't leave you with that as a nugget. I have to really, I have to really teach it. I almost threw you a nugget, but I won't do that. Because I have to teach it. But it says when they... 13th verse and when the trumpeters and the singers were joined in unison making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord 
And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments for song and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy, loving kindness endures forever. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Thanksgiving brings on the cloud. It's a certain kind of praise. Now, if y'all don't want it, y'all tell me. Because that's what I'm going for. And I'm not going to pull for it every week. That would be the next mantle of the reputation of this next level of praying. He said, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. I don't want control worship. I don't want control praise. I want the cloud. I want that experience. ready for our assignment I'm ready to go up and it be about somebody else mm -hmm. another country another nation another family because you already standing proxy for yours you pray for yours at home when you come to prayer bring an assignment bring the lady next door Bring the situation on your job. Come on, somebody. Bring the condition that somebody told you about. Bring the people that you met that's going through. Bring the lady's name to prayer that the doctor says she ain't gonna make it. Oh, I'm talking right now. Because when you stick that in the cloud, he will do with his hands what he spoke with his mouth. That's when we're going to start seeing results. It ain't about you. It ain't about you. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. The Bible said that a faithful man. And let me tell you something that's so powerful. And I'm going to give you a witness on this. Some of you all have been coming to... How many of you all have been coming to, 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 to Vibe in prayer? And... Um, you kind of been with us for a while doing, doing the early stages of 5 a.m. prayer. You've been coming, been coming. Let me tell you about the assignment. Do you remember the season that the Lord had me falling out screaming Mariah Carey's name? See, some of y'all be thinking we just be carrying on in here. Do you remember that season? And there would be times that Prayer would be over and I would be standing here and the power of God would and just knock me down on the floor and I'd just be hollering out her name. I didn't know her. Never met her. Didn't know if I would ever meet her. But the Lord had me screaming out in desperation for her life. I was praying for her life. I was praying for her mind. I was binding suicide. You can go back and get the tapes. If you can go, if, if Brother Wooden would go back and stretch the, the tapes and you pull it up on the tapes, I, I was crying out to God for her. During that time that I was crying out to God for her, months after that is when she had a breakdown. And somebody from this prayer, and I don't even know who it was, was able to reach her and said, you ain't going to die because there's a lady in Queens that's been screaming out your name. Let me tell you about God. So there's a lady in Queens that's been screaming out your name. And she said, she praying for me for real. And she said, she said, but she don't know me, but this lady is crying out to God for you. She said, well, can you bring me the tapes? So for two years, she has ordered all of my tapes and I did not know it. She has read all of my books, and I did not know it. On the Word Network, she wakes up at 5 o'clock in the morning to watch me on television. 
when we got ready to do the threshing floor conference, even before that, she made contact with me. Had somebody to find me and I started ministering to her on the phone. And a week before the conference, she called and said, I'm coming to the threshing floor conference. It's bigger than this building. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. I wish you heard it, but you don't hear it. What we do in here is hitting something in the spirit realm, and it ain't no joke. It ain't no joke. I'm crying out to God on the threshing floor. He's bringing people before me. And all of a sudden, I'm getting, I'm getting these phone calls, and, 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 and Angie Stone, you know, he said, I don't know, I don't even know what God is doing. But, you know, the, 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 the record company, I already told them, I don't want to say, I want to sing gospel. I want to be saved. And, and, and I've been following your ministry and I'm your spiritual daughter. It's another level. It's another level. My husband told me yesterday, he said, I don't even know if you know. He said, but do you know Tweet go to our church? He said, do you know she's been coming to church ever since we opened up the church in Atlanta and she's here every Wednesday at 5 o'clock and every Sunday service at 12? He said, and every, every day, every Sunday she comes, she bring a whole little crew with her. God is up to something. God is up to something. And if we ain't reaching nobody but people in our church, then we, we ain't doing nothing. It's time to go after the big fish. Okay, y'all ain't saying that. That's why we need, that's why we need a cloud. We need something bigger than just praise service. We need an anointing bigger than just, oh, we just came to 5 a.m. prayer. We need the cloud. We need the cloud. I'm going to finish this next week because God's really speaking some things in this. We're going to finish this next week. We need the cloud. We need the cloud. That's my prayer. My prayer is that them people walk in here. My prayer is that they find a resting place. Our next assignment is Whitney Houston. We are going to pray. That's our next assignment. That's a big chief right there. We gonna have to go up in some realms to get her out. Oh, come on, somebody! Come on, somebody! I said we gonna have to go up in some realms to get her out. We going to spend time in prayer for her until we see God break it. Ain't nothing too hard for God. We going after her. So write that in the back of your Bible right now. Whitney Houston's name. Write her name down right now. We ain't playing in here. We ain't coming here to have church. Write her name down in the back of your Bible. Scratch our book in them because you do it there. Well, you don't understand. He in jail. Maybe that's what God wanted right now. Because if he wasn't in jail right now, he'd be driving you crazy. You'd be telling me where he at and what he doing. And bring, bring, people ringing your doorbell. Leave him in there. God know when he's going to come out. Right, Whitney Houston's name by now. Put today's date. I want, I want y'all to bring some new prayer, prayer journals. I want you to get some prayer journals. I see hers. Let me see your notebook, baby. I want you to get your prayer journal. Something about this size. I want you to get a brand new one. Because we're getting ready to fill it up with names. We're getting ready to pray for people. We on an assignment. We get ready to pray for people until we pray them through. Oh, somebody come on. Somebody come on. Tom Bynum, put that name on your list. Put it in the back of your Bible. We get ready to pray for people till God break it. Thank you, Jesus. Tom Bynum, B-Y-N-U-M. I'm not having you to pray for him because he's my brother. I'm having you to pray for him because he has an assignment. And he's a worshiper. And the enemy got his gift tied up. He's a worshiper to the nations. 
That's why we're praying for these people. We're praying for people that's going to make a difference. And the enemy knows that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Write down P. Diddy's name. We're praying for these people. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be our prayer journal. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Put Carlton Pearson's name down. Because we ain't praying for people that we want God to touch them. We going up for strongholds. People that we know that the enemy got them tied up. And the only way they're going to get out is somebody going to have to pray them out. And somebody going to have to pray for real. And not just say, I'm praying for you. No, pray for real. Pray for real. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The names that you write down, I want you to get a new prayer journal. I want you to call it my new assignment. When we come to 5 a.m. prayer. Before the prayer is over, when we tap in that realm for these people. And we're going to start seeing God's hand. He did it for Mariah. Now, I don't even know if you remember when I used to call out Mary J. Blige's name. I'm telling you, get this, this in here ain't fake. When we start tapping them realms, we're going we, we to see the results of the kingdom. We're not playing no games. We're not going to be in here entertaining each other and crying every week and going out saying, I just, this prayer was so good. No. Prayer was effective. Somebody asked you how was prayer. It was very effective this week. Because the Bible said the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man. Of them at much. And why am I on this? I'm on this because I really want you to understand the power of his presence. And if you don't get that, then you can't maintain it. If you don't get the full understanding of it, you can't maintain it. And that's what we have to bring. We cannot come in here every week and wake and work up to that point. Where we end the prayer an hour and a half and then, then we just now tapping a point. We have to come through that door with it already on us. That's why you got to go clear out your cabin and get, and get worship tapes that's going to keep you in his presence because we don't have the time anymore to come in here and, and, and work up an hour and a half to get to a certain level because you have to go to a certain level in the presence of God in order to do certain damages because it is the spirit of the Lord that has to lead you there. So we don't have that kind of time anymore to be coming in here for a whole hour and a half before we get to the level for the leading of the spirit of God. We got to walk through that door with it on us. We got to walk through that door. Then come five o'clock, if you don't see me, if you don't see Elder, you already in a ram. Oh, I ain't hear nobody say nothing. Cleaners messed up my other dress and we had to pull a dress out at the last minute to iron it. And, but upstairs, I should already heard you. I should come down that aisle if I'm one minute late. And I should be trying to figure out how I'm going to jump into your prayer. Not you waiting for me to say, oh, clap your hands, somebody, greet somebody. Because we know we have an assignment and it starts at five. It don't start with prophetess. It don't start with elder. My alarm in my spirit goes off at five. If elder here and he not here. If prophet is here or she not here. My alarm clock of prayer starts at five. Touch your neighbor and say, start at five. Tell them not 520, not 530, not six o'clock. Like I see some of y'all coming in here. It starts at five. It starts at five. And I got to come through the door touching around. So we can go to our next level. That means all week long you got to live in that realm. Because that's too far to climb. And I want to have. You got to live in that realm. So somebody tell me you got to live in it. Get your prayer seed. 
Get your prayer seat. You're already going for it at 5 o'clock. You have already started your walk. It's 5 o'clock. Hallelujah. Prophet is late. She's going to have to catch us. Because we already got names right here on our prayer list where we need to start at. Come on, somebody tell God thank you. Because this next level is not for babies. It's for the elders. Tell somebody God called you because he's ready to mature you. He called you here this time because he's ready to mature you. He called you here because he's ready to get you off milk. And he's ready to put you on the meat of the level of praying. Tell them this is your next level. It's your next level. I'm telling you, we're going to another level. Bring God a prayer seed. Bring it to him. you come and sing that. So easy to love. So easy to love. Come on, somebody worship him. Do great in Bethel Ministries.
Just to be close. 